We're back at the Bob Devaney Sports Center in Lincoln, Nebraska for the NCAA Men's Gymnastics Championships. Tim Ryan with Peter Vidmar ready for rotation number five. Two rotations remain. Josh Stein, a freshman from Stanford, as the Cardinal now works on the parallel bars. And this is going to be a lot of pressure for a freshman because the, everybody's going to have to hit their routines to stay in the running. There's a back toss. Front up rise. Another back toss. A nice stutz to a handstand. He's going to have to stay consistent here. Get the team off to a good start. This isn't a super difficult routine, but I think right now Stanford just wants to get a good solid score as they move on to the other routines. Double pike, hard dismount. Oh, and he fell down. This is going to be a big problem. The other five scores are going to have to count. Coach Sadao Hamada from Stanford can't be too pleased with that, but the effort is there from the freshman from Houston. But an opportunity is there for this freshman, Richard Grace. Only a 9-1 awarded to Stein as Grace goes to the high bar for Nebraska. And this could be a big difference right here. A high bar is an exciting event. Richard does a great routine. If he hits it, that'll put Nebraska way into the lead. Reverse sack with his legs together. He's tipped into his inverted giants. That's a requirement. And now setting up for his dismount. Usually he does a triple. Will he do it? There's one, two, three. And Grace falls also. The cushion is gone. Every gymnast is going to have to hit for them to get a good score. And Grace looks like he's hurt himself on that fall, getting some attention from the training staff. Let's see where he hurt his back. He does a triple back flip. Very difficult. He gets too much rotation. He's spinning so fast that when he opens up, he's all the way around, lands right in his back. Looks like he jammed his back. Now, this young native of Omaha has been having a great meet, the freshman. And hopefully he's not hurt. There's one rotation to go, remember. And Grace on his feet. Now, meanwhile, Tim Ryan of Stanford ready for the parallel bars. Coming off a bad vault, you may recall, as we watch Grace now getting some attention over there. You don't get any more pressure than this. Every gymnast is going to have to hit for them to get a good score. Tim's going to have to be solid. There's his Diamidoff. A nice front one and three quarter. Very difficult skill. A little bubble when he caught that elbow. Could be a minor deduction. There's a Stutz. Let's see if he can nail his dismount. So far, we've got two missed dismounts from both teams. And a double pike. And he lands perfectly. They're back in the running. Uh, Coach Yamada responds to that a little differently than the last performance. Tim Ryan from Coopersburg, Pennsylvania. And he feels better, but 9.825. Nice. So now the pressure shifts to Richard Kiefer, yet another freshman representing Nebraska on the high bar. And the pressure's going to be on this freshman because he does a wild high bar routine, including a Gaylord 2, one of the most difficult skills in gymnastics. Let's see if he does it. Here he goes. He goes for it, and he catches it. An incredible skill. Look at that. Nebraska is answering Stanford routine by routine now. The judges are going to love that skill, and they're going to be really impressed for him doing it under all this pressure. Getting ready for his dismount. A double layout. Great landing. They're going to get an incredible score here. Rick Kiefer, the freshman from Longview, Texas, and the crowd here cheering for Nebraska. Loves that effort. Let's take a look at his Gaylord, too. Remember, Mitch Gaylord did this eight years ago at the 1984 Olympics, but still, not many guys are doing it. It's very, very risky. The margin of error is quite small. And he catches it. So Rick Kiefer of Nebraska with a score of 9.825. What a battle we've got. Jair Lynch now for Stanford. His best score of the season, a 9.9. And he'd love to have that right here. And he's certainly capable of it. He's got some wonderful giant sequences coming up right here. It is a giant to a Diamidoff. 
perfect to a giant into an L grip pirouette. That's an incredible skill. He does it as good as anybody in the world. There's his backup rise to a straddle cut. Boy, this is exciting. We're seeing some fantastic performances all under incredible pressure. Here's his back toss. Front up rise. He does a double front. Very difficult to land, and he lands it great. And look at the hands. <laughs> <laughs> That's become a trademark during this championship event in the preliminaries and here in the finals. Let's take a look at this dismount. It's very difficult to see the ground when you're flipping frontwards. Jair does a double front. He opens up just right, and the ground's in the right spot. And look at his palms straight up, just like any other great routine that he does. Showing that chalk has become his trademark when he's happy with an event, and he's had a lot of reason to be happy. So are his teammates. 9.925 for Jair Lynch. That's his new personal best. And what a time to hit it. Meanwhile, Dennis Harrison will try to match it over on the high bar. Dennis is a tough gymnast, but he's got a lot of pressure right here. This could be it. With the team title on the line, let's see what he does. A reverse check with his legs together. And a reverse check again with his legs together, right to a flyaway half turn. We call that a ganger. No mistake so far. Everybody's answering. Right back with each other. Rising to the occasion. There's his inverted giant or his eagle giant. Now getting ready for his dismount. So far, he's right on track. Dismounts with a half in, half out. Perfect landing. <laughs> and look at the palms. Answering right back to Jair. Crowd Papa. Sophomore Dennis Harrison. I don't think there's much doubt that he's having a little fun at Lynch's expense. That's the competition they're feeling right now. One for one, team for team. Don't forget another full rotation to go. 9.850 on the horizontal bar for Dennis Harrison. And so the national championship will be decided on the final rotation. Stanford 15 one hundreds ahead. Francis Allen trying for number eight in national championships, trailing by 15 one-hundredths of a point, coming into the final rotation. The Stanford team looks pumped on foreign soil here. Richard Grace will start off the final rotation for Nebraska. And after hurting his back on the high bar dismount, let's see if he can do a good vault. A nice layout suit, a little step. It's going to get a good score. His back mustn't hurt that much. Boy, this is some tough young freshman. Richard Grace from Omaha, and his team appreciates that, 9.625. Jair Lynch for Stanford. A 9.85, his best score on the horizontal bar this season. He has been hot in every event. He's really having the best meet of his life right now. He's got to have a lot of confidence, even though there's a lot of pressure. Here's his legs together, reverse hex, caught perfectly. And a straddle reverse hex. There's a little mixed grip catch. Takes him right up to a handstand from that stalder. Here's his dorsal grip requirement. We call those inverted or eagle giants. Now getting ready for his dismount. It's a double front with a half twist in the laid out position. He's the only one that does it, and he lands it perfectly. And up come the hands, showing the palms as he himself happy with another great performance and his Stanford teammates appreciate that Dennis Harrison a season high 975 on vault he wants to duplicate or better that 99 for Jair Lynch of Stanford more pressure on Harrison and Dennis has had a fantastic meet as you see Jim Hartung and Phil Cahoy his idols watching him along with dad ever present camera it is a layout, Sukahara with a full twist. Opens nice and early, and he sticks the landing. And you saw his palms come up, too. He continues his personal duel with Jair Lynch. What a team man Harrison is. He's the leader. Let's take a look at this vault. What I like about it is that he opens up from the twist so soon. He finishes the twist, opens up right there. 
digs his feet in for the landing, and he's not going to be intimidated as he sticks his palms right up. <laughs> a little show of intensity there as it's coming right down to the wire. Nebraska and Stanford, a score of 9-7-5. Now Jeff Bender, the last routine on the horizontal bar. Stanford can smell victory right here in Lincoln, Nebraska, but they need a solid effort from Bender. And this could be a scary routine because Jeff does an original skill. In fact, the guys at the gym call it the Bender Flip. Bender from Lancaster, California, a junior. Here it goes. He snaps back, goes for it, catches it on his fingernails. He barely held on to the bar. For the most part, the pressure's off right now. If he could just finish his routine, nothing else is very risky for the rest of this performance. Just can't afford an error. The guys on his team must be getting awfully excited right now. Here he goes, getting ready for his dismount. He takes it backwards over the bar. Double back flip with a full twist. He sticks it. Jeff Bender, greeted by his coach, Sadao Hamada. Hamada, I'm sure, feels that Perhaps they have won their first ever national championship. As we take a look at Jeff's routine again in slow motion, you gotta wonder what's going through a guy's mind with all this pressure, knowing that the team title is possibly on the line and it's all on this one brand new skill, never been done before. There it is, the bender flip snaps backwards into a back flip, a back up rise. Now he just tries to finish that routine. Without that big skill, the rest of the routine is really not incredibly difficult. He needs that big trick, and this is where Coach Sadao Hamada's strategy has paid off. A couple months before the beginning of the season, he sat down with his guys and said, hey, look, What's going to make the difference? And they all decided that if they could all do something that was original, that that would make a difference for the team. That could be enough to give them the edge to win the team title. It seems like it's paid off right here. Here's his dismount. Full twist over the bar. Lands it just right. And boy, do his teammates go nuts, because they know they've got, possibly, that NCAA team title. Coach Amata's been there for 20 years. He's never won it before. It means a lot to him, and you can see how disappointed the guys from Nebraska are. And so Stanford, with a new national scoring record, wins its first NCAA Men's Gymnastics Championship. And with Jair Lynch scoring a 59.05, that's definitely international caliber performances from him. Despite the individual aspects of this sport, this is a team championship. And here's to the 1992 champions. Peter Vidmar, I'm Tim Ryan, reminding you to stay tuned for the Bell South Atlanta Golf Classic, next. CBS Sports coverage of the 1992 NCAA Men's Gymnastics Championships is sponsored by Met Life. Get Met, it pays. Head and shoulders because you never get a second chance to make a first impression. 
and by Rider, a leading provider of transportation solutions for business.